Hey, so today we're going to talk about one more rule of commas, and this one isn't necessarily difficult. It's just one that requires thought. This is one you have to slow down and think about, because where you put those commas can really change your meaning. And so this is where we use commas to separate out extra information in our sentence. So we've got our subject and our predicate, and sometimes we can have extra information at the beginning, the middle, the end, and we're going to show that with those commas. So let's just check it out. Um, setting off extra information. Here's a great example. Um, the criminal said the judge was an idiot. Well, in this first sentence, it's the criminal saying the judge was an idiot. If we use commas, the criminal said the judge was an idiot. All of a sudden, the criminal becomes an idiot. So this is a good example of what happens whenever we use those commas. Um, and there's a saying in the, law, in the legal profession called, say, the saying goes, hanged on a comma which is things like this, that we can put a comma somewhere and it can totally change the meaning. So let's look at kind of how we figure this out. Check out this sentence. Um, when Erwin was ready to iron, his cat jumped on the ironing board. That sounds weird. Erwin was ready to iron his cat? No, no, no. When Erwin was ready to iron, comma, his cat jumped on the ironing board. And if you look at that second part, we've got cat jumped. And so there's our subject, who, what happened, what's the main thing, jumped on the ironing board. The rest is extra. So when you have extra information like details, things that set context, that give your readers a clearer picture, and they don't contribute to the essential meaning of your sentence, put those commas around them. Let's look at some more examples. From Terry Mann to Grace Haddix, comma, EPCC has a number of good English teachers. So here are main sentences, EPCC has a number of good English teachers. Terry Mann, Grace Haddix, those are just some examples. It's extra. Your handwriting, said the teacher, is amazing. What do we have in there? Extra information. Who said these words? Um, I went to lunch with my friend Fran, who lives in Venton. So here are the main point, I went to lunch with my friend, by the way, she lives in Benton, and sometimes that extra information will be kind of a by the way. But you'll notice here that you can have extra information at the beginning, in the middle, and if so, we put commas on both sides of it, and at the end. So, again, our extra information. Um, where it gets tricky is sometimes whenever we've got, to, when we, that extra information isn't really extra because it's showing us someone or something specific. The student who made an A helped me study for my test. Well, if I just say the student helped me study for my test, there are lots of students in this world. It could be any of them. But I'm saying the student who made an A. So without that who made an A, you're going to be like, which student? So in that case, no commas. Check this out. I've got two sentences. If you like video games, you should read Soda Pop Soldier, Control Alt Revolt, and Ready Player One. I just mentioned three books that are really great. And then if I say the book is super, you're going to say which one. So the book Ready Player One, here, this is necessary. I don't want commas around it because it's important for you to know in the context of what I've said. And so that's kind of really one of the key things is you've got to think about what does your audience know? Um, you know, have I just said, mentioned like 40 things, and I'm saying this one is great, then that one, you don't want to put those commas around it because otherwise you're saying it's extra information. And here's our little extra information dance. You'll remember our connecting sentences. Well, this one, we put those commas around it. Um, here are some more kind of tricky examples that depend on, again, what do I mean? The concert that was expensive was well worth it. If we've just talked about all the concerts we might have went to, and I've talked about some that were cheap, some that were free, some that were one that was expensive, then that that was expensive is necessary. We can't get rid of it. And generally, this is a general rule of thumb, but generally, when you have that, you won't use commas. On the other hand, when you have which, you generally will. But again, you have to think about your meaning, not just in that one con sentence, but in the context of everything you're saying. So here, we went to the concert, which was expensive. This becomes a by the way. You know, we went to this concert, and oh, yeah, it was expensive, by the way. I want you to know this. Um, so again, context, context, context. 
Um, this one, notice these last two sentences are exactly the same. The teacher gave us extra credit, comma, which was worth 10 points. If I put that comma there, I'm saying, eh, just extra. But let's say I have a 69 or a 61. No, 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 an 81. I'm going to do better than that. I got an 81, but I really like that A. Then the teacher gave us extra credit, which was worth 10 points, becomes vitally important because I go from an 81 to a 91, and that changes the whole thing. So again, that comma is a signal to your reader, is this extra or is this important and imperative? Um, now, one of the things, too, is really that's kind of it in terms of the extra information. When you read the writer's reference, you read anything else, you're going to find a lot of kind of more technical explanations of this. But we're wor working on just kind of get the basics at this point. Um, so, you know, we've looked at the direct address, we looked at the sentences, we looked at exclamations, we looked at lists of more than two, so three or more things, um, and then this extra information. The tricky thing is, is we hardly use these on their own. When we write sentences, very often we're packing one, two, maybe three different of these rules in here. So here's an example, and you'll find this in writing down the basics too, so you can look at it a little more slowly and carefully, of a sentence, one sentence that has all these things going on. While I was looking out the window, ooh, I'm setting context. This is extra information. My dog, little buddy, oh, this is who this is about, who is somewhat of a scallywag and at times very sneaky. Oh, what did he do? He ran in and jumped on the counter and, oh, here's another sentence. Much to my surprise, comma, he started talking. What did he do? The second sentence predicate saying, hey, human, direct address, we get a comma. Give me some bacon, eggs, and toast. And we've got our commas in the list. So, um, there's, there's your example of kind of how they all go together and um, how they work together. So as we move on, as we go through writing, again, remember, as you're studying writing, when you're in class, this is a place to slow down and think about these rules. The more you do it slowly and carefully here, the more you'll get to where you don't have to think about it as much. I still have to look things up once in a while. I have to stop and go, wait, what's the rule? I come to that yellow light when I'm driving. Sometimes I know to go faster. Sometimes I know to slow down. Sometimes, some days, I still have to say, well, what do I do? Right? And that's the way with grammar works. So the more you do it, the easier it will get. You'll still run into bumps in the road here and there, but practice will help. And, you know, one of the things that does happen whenever we do study commas and the technicalities of grammar is a lot of times, you know, we start off, you start off wherever you are, and we learn the rules, and then we kind of overuse them or underuse them. We overuse them, and then we'll move to underusing them. You know, I may mark on your paper, not here or there, whatever, and then we'll underuse them, and then we swing back to this place where we kind of finally get it. So, again, like I mentioned last time when we talked about the first part of commas, don't expect to get it right away, right? I mean, you may already have this. Cool. Rock on. Um, I know that I understood the rules when I graduated with all of my degrees. I'd taken advanced grammar classes, but I didn't really know them. I hadn't really internalized them in a lot of ways. So um, it takes time and it takes thoughtfulness, but you can do it. So again, got questions, um, let me know. Email me. Ask me in class. Um, give me a call. Um, whatever it is, and um, take care, and we will talk to you next time.